Um, but first of all, thank you for letting me to come back and talk before this great group. I am with the county's environmental lands program. Um, our environmental lands program main mission is to protect the water, wildlife, and wilderness. And we are a small group of biologists. Um, we're a small group of biologists that realized doing little speaking engagements that if we want to meet our goal of protecting polks, water, wildlife, and wilderness, we needed to get people outdoors to appreciate the water, wildlife, and wilderness of Polk County. So now you know what my goal is, water, wildlife, and wilderness. <laughs> Excuse me. So I know this picture, I was actually going to look for one of my high school pictures of my big hair up like this high, but didn't get the chance. So I know we've all had those moments where we've looked back and we're like, man, if I could go back, I would really do that differently. And so I hope some of the lessons that we learned through the process at our nature center, Polk's Nature Discovery Center at Circle V Bar Reserve, just south of Lakeland. How many have been out to our reserve? Oh, good. The rest of you are invited. It's free, open to the public, Tuesday through Saturday from 9 to 4, and on Sunday from noon to 4. We have some really great wildlife hiking trails, lots of wildlife observation. We constructed the Nature Center. Its construction completed November of 2008. You'll notice that coincides with phase one of our exhibits, 2008. So that was phase one. Phase two of our exhibits, we just completed recently. So we've been through, through two full phases of exhibits. And during the design of our nature center with an architect, we actually semi went through a design phase. So I'm not an expert, but I've been through it three times now. So hopefully some of the stuff that we hiccuped on, I can share with you. All right, <coughs> so I've got a little extra time. So why do we do exhibits? because we want to get our message across. And like Tony mentioned earlier, we can't all be standing out there greeting every person that comes and says, my message is Polk's water, wildlife, and wilderness is great. So I want everybody to take a moment, stand up. Everybody go ahead and stand up at your seat, stretch out a little bit. <laughs> go ahead and stretch a little bit. I know we need to a little bit. Now, Here's where it's a trick. What is your message? You've got less than a minute to turn to the person next to you and try to introduce yourself and tell them what your message is. You can flip coins on who you go to who goes first. All right, ready, set, go. All right, stop. Oh, no, you can't keep going. That's all you got. Less than one minute. It goes by really quick. Now you can switch, not the other person. All right, now go. And stop. Excellent job. Give yourselves a round of applause for that one. Now, Anyone who's been through interpretive training, there's lots of different ways to say it, but we try to break it down very simply. Three-step process, less than a minute. You've got to hook them in. This is usually when people are walking by you on the trail or coming in your nature center wanting to know where the bathroom is at, how you hook them in to learning about the meat of your message. So it's very quick, that short amount of time you should have for everybody's program or everybody's message that you're working on at the time, a hook meet and message. Now, the advantage of exhibits is they're there a little bit longer and you've got a couple extra steps that you can follow. But it's very similar steps. So first, you're gonna have to grab their attention. When they come in your nature center with a Blake stare, something's gonna grab their attention and they're gonna go over to that. That's the first goal of your exhibit. And the next is to limit the message. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on limiting messages as we go through there because that's, I think, one thing that we struggled with the most during our process. Use a tactile approach. Who likes to go up to a flat sign versus something you can just put your hands on and rub? As simple as a raised 
Um, we have like a little bare um, paw print on a raised um, granite bar that you could just put your hand on. And it's so funny, you can actually stand there and watch people rub the bear cu or paw while they're reading the text on black bear corridors, wildlife corridors. Clear the path. This is something we actually do struggle with at our nature center, I'll talk about a little bit more on, is that if you want them to go to it and learn about that message, you've got to get all the clutter of everything else out of the way and away from them while you're trying to get that message across. Engage multiple senses. Of course, we talked about touch, and they're going to see it. But don't forget about smell and hearing. Those are really valuable senses to get them engaged. And if, um, some of those senses have made our exhibits even more popular in the second phase. And then make sure you extend your message. It should be in there a couple times. And make sure you always in on what that consistent message is. Uh-oh. Now, this is fun. When you build it, they will come. But who the heck is they? When we built the Nature Center, we did a lot of this planning with our architect in the first phase. What is our audience? Audience, everyone knows, is extremely important. Who is our audience? Who do we want to reach out to? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, sometimes who you want to reach isn't always who comes out to you. Um, one of the interesting things to also remember is not only the age groups, we focus so much on audience age groups, that sometimes we forget about their user interest as well. Um, so a lot of people that come to a nature center, they enjoy nature, correct? Or nature reserve. We have a really interesting user group that we completely miss during the planning of our educational process, and that's family portraits. Bring the family out for Halloween photos, Christmas card photos birthdays, anniversary photos. That was not a user group that we focus on targeting. But I can tell you on the weekends, it's one of our high user groups in the afternoons as the sun is setting on the marsh and in the, on the reserve. So one challenge of your message is reaching a wide audience. So it comes back to, again to knowing that not everybody sees the same way. So take a moment, look at this. How many of you see a bunny rabbit? Yeah, so did I. Now, how many of you see the duck? There we go. We have a room that's very confused right now because they see two different messages. Simple things like an alligator on the ground. We have a nice little alligator statue that the kids can get their photo taken beside and stuff like that. You know, it's one of those things you have to be careful. What is the message that's being sent to the visitors? Well, we thought, hey, they can get up and close to the alligator here in the nature center and it's safe. What did they think for a while? Hey, we can go outside and sit on the alligators because they're statues. Really, people? But seriously, those were the responses that we got. So be very aware. Um, the importance of taking your time on messaging, it's a two-edged sword, I would say, because we spent majority of the time on going through the conceptual phases, through the planning. How do you want the audience to feel? What actions do you want the audience to take walking away from this? It's a very important process, and it's a very long process of the exhibit design plays. So this is just one little page of our interpretive plan, which is about 15 pages in total. It's too little to see, but you can see lots of bullets of all the key themes that we want to include, and what we want the exhibits to evoke those kind of messages. The reason I want to show you that is because as important as that process is, sometimes when you're going through this process and you're overanalyzing and you're overanalyzing and overanalyzing everything, you forget, keep it simple, smarty. We don't use stupid at my house, so <laughs> we had to go with smarty. Keep it simple, smarty, because it's that simple, clear message that you started with that you really actually want to end with. So don't fall trapped to all the details and the Contractors saying, well, what do you really want this to say? And can we say it this way? If you want water as a limited resource, by golly, that's what you need to focus on is water as a limited resource. Remember, your visitors are not scientists. And at the end of the day, remember, what do you really want them to know? Along the process, your messaging will shift. Um, this is an example of our not so much messaging shifting, but our realization of what the point is we want to get across. We started on the left with this really wicked cool illustration of the water system, basically. 
How does a water drop travel through the cycle? And I just, it would be super wicked cool if we could actually design this to something that creates. But the issue came is how do you educate someone or you interpret that exhibit when it stands there by itself? So that exhibit morphed into Hydro, a kid-friendly cartoon character that actually takes you on a tour of each of the different watersheds that are a part of Polk County. So what was our end up theme? We started with here's the water system and what we really wanted to know is what is a watershed and how do the different watersheds, when we're at the headwaters, where do they end up and how we're affecting those? Kick the biologist out of the room. <laughs> This is hard for um, my supervisor, Gay Sharp, staying back there, and she was our project manager through most of these exhibit design processes. And as I mentioned, we're both biologists. So when you're two of the three, and the third one's a biologist too, it's hard to kick the biologist out of the room on your team. But the truth comes the matter is, through the first phase of exhibits, we went round and round and round for days. This is an example of our turkey that's in our exhibit now. As a biologist, I could sit there all day long and be like, oh, just a little bit here and a little bit there. And it's not, he's a little chunky here for our turkeys. It looks like a northern turkey, you know, all these little petty things. But you know what? When the public walks in, it's a turkey. That's what they're going to see. So remember that. The other hazard of writing, um, keeping the biologist in the room sometimes is you get two complex messages. For instance, this was an exhibit that we did in phase one. He's no longer there because we made it way too complex. Wicked cool exhibit about the green swamp. Here's the green swamp, 560,000 acres, covers a large portion of central Florida. The liquid heart of Florida feeds five rivers. It also has the aquifer close to the surface. So here in the green swamp, the potential for water contamination is high because there's very little soil sediments for filtration and cleaning and wetlands to get those out. The other functions of a wetlands provide is flood protection. This little hand cranky thingy over here on the left is a sponge. You hit a button, it rains, you see how the sponge holds all this water just as a wetland does. And then you can pull the handlebar down and see how much water would be stored during flood protection in that wetland. The little square on the right is filtration. There's these little red and green beads in there that are pollutants, bad stuff. You hit the button on that side and it rains. But again, the sponge filters those out and clean water comes out on the bottom side. Like I said, a wicked cool exhibit. If I'm standing beside it all day long and explaining this to someone, these are really high level thinking problems and concepts and issues that we are dealing in our land management and our conservation of this area. But to the general public, I sort of lose them on aquifer, lime rock. <laughs> somewhere in their filtration. Those are sort of higher level of thinking where they're just like, water is limited. Do you want your water dirty or you want your water clean? Let's go with this route. And so simplifying messages and making them too complex in your exhibits can really be a downfall. We're going to talk about this exhibit again, by the way. So your exhibit team, um, it is important to have a core exhibit team you want to uh, represent your audience. Don't forget who your audience is going to be. If it is, you know, whatever your audience is going to be, you want to always remember your audience building your team and make sure you've got people that can relate to those audiences. It was actually very fortunate of us when we went through this process. Um, I ended up um, having my first child. So all of a sudden in my back of my head, oh, child-proof, child-proof. Cover the electric cords, two beats, balls have to be big enough so they don't do this. Ladders have to be secure enough so they don't do this. So it's good to have different generations and people different um, backgrounds to be able to provide that knowledge. It is good to have a biologist. You're going to have to have a biologist, a scientist, experts on your team. It's nice to have a writer on your team. Uh, we sort of have a writer on our team. Um, we're all biologists really when it comes down to it. And then it's also good to have a local knowledge. This is one that's extremely important with your exhibit teams because at the end of the day, it's your reserve that's being represented. And although we contracted out all of our um, exhibit design and fabrication, there's not a whole lot in Polk County 
exhibit design fabrication firms. So when they start sending you samples, it looks a lot like North Florida or the Midwest or wherever they're from that they know of. So having local knowledge is important. Having a small team, I think, is better. Um, we had a small team. We, we started out with a big team. We didn't get anywhere. Everybody was throwing out their ideas and not really getting anywhere product-wise. So <sighs> project managers are crucial. The number one thing of exhibit team is have a project manager that is not going to leave. <laughs> our first phase is exhibit exhibits, not on our side, but the other side. Project management is, is, is important with your contractor. We went through three project managers. I can tell, not tell you the amount of stuff that we lost in communication transition through three project managers. Um, so that's big importance. Project managers need to be bulldogs. They need to be the ones that come in and throw it on someone's desk and say, look, I need you to look at this now. I need you to get your comments, and we need to send it back up because that will slow the process down extremely. And project managers need to have good communication skills and documentation skills. Documentation skills are very important in this process. Because if you sign off on something and they print it and send it to you, if it's not right, you're still paying for it. So make sure the documentation is there. You can say, no, we asked you to change this, and it didn't get done. Time frame. So time frame, don't rush the process. If you rush, that's when mistakes come into play. Um, don't schedule your grand opening around the final installation date of your exhibits. Um, it wasn't actually intentional, um, Gay and I were reflecting this on the drive up this morning, that initially the exhibits were going to be done about two to three months before our grand opening of our new nature center. I will tell you at one o'clock in the morning, the morning of, or the, the morning of the grand opening, the exhibits were still being installed. <laughs> So it makes for great panic, and also some of the exhibits we hadn't had the chance to test and those kind of things. And each project is different, but just thumb of rule that I've learned, if they tell you six months on the phone, you turn around to everybody else and say 12 months, double it. Because the reality, that's what's going to happen. In some way, somewhere down the line, that's, it's going to happen. And your boss will be so much happier if it ends up in nine months. He'll be like, oh, I thought it was going to be 12 months. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got three months early. So, so keep that in mind. Just keep yourself saying. Along the way, create some progress reports. The media will be calling. Your commissioners will be calling and say, um, we're spending all this money. What's going on? Um, so... Be putting those out there. Be thinking of that. They can do the illustrations, the conceptual illustrations. It's usually an extra cost, but it's well worth it because not only you can use it for the progress reports to report what's going on and what your vision is, but you can also use it for grant funding as well. Okay, so now I'm going sort of into the, you know, oops, this is what we did. Try not to do this at your joint. Be aware, be very aware what you're asking your um, visitors to do. So that, what is this? A sitting area, right? A beautiful sitting area. What should a person do in that? Sit. Well, duh, why weren't we thinking that when we stuck it all the way in the corner? So grandma and grandpa come in and sit down in the corner, and the kids go play on that side of the exhibit. So we set ourselves up for a situation where we have children running amok, with very little parental supervision because we provided a sitting area way over there. Second phase of exhibit, we put little seats spread out throughout the exhibit hall so they can sit nicely and watch their child jump off the ladder. So just one of those things. Second phase you catch on to. Water exhibits, stay away from them. I know why now. The biggest one, aquarium, is so attractive to have, but if you don't have the staff who understands aquariums, first of all, and they're not going to commit to stay with you forever because we did have a staff person that said they would take care of the aquarium when we started this process, and they are not there anymore. The, the, it becomes quite a headache and a learning experience for someone like me who has no green thumb or wildlife thumb when it comes to raising critters. They're meant to be outside on their own. Um, the other thing with aquariums is don't fall to the, getting the big bass. I've gone through I don't know how many tankfuls of fish that have vanished within a week because of the big bass in the aquarium because they will eat everyone else. So I keep calling FWC and I said, can you please bring me a bunch of little bluegills and sunfish and gar? Oh, I got a big bass. No bass, please. 
The other day they brought some. A golden shiner was in the mouth between bucket one and bucket two, fish being dropped off. I'm like, this is what I'm talking about, man. Electronic exhibits, be cognizant of who's going to have to turn them on every morning. Phase one, we had one exhibit that's required pushing five different buttons in a specific order to get the exhibit to turn on. Now we have volunteers that turn the exhibits on in the morning, so be very cognizant of this. Movable exhibits, if it's got a door, it's going to be slammed. If it slides, it's going to be slammed. If it rotates, it's going to be spun like a carousel as fast as they can. So you just have to know those things going into it. Exhibits with handles, again, this one. Um, that big handle, who would have known that's a chin-up bar for children? <laughs> they can get both hands on that. They can pull up and down quite a few times on that bar. So we did some just real general surveys of our volunteers and staff and, and visitors that come to the Nature Center. Um, and it was really interesting because from each of the different perspectives, it was a completely different um, view of what the center has done through phase one to versus phase two. So here's some of them. Um, more diversity, most definitely. Our first phase was um, funded through the Southwest Florida Water Management District, which we completely appreciate the funding, but that meant all of our exhibits were water resource related. So phase two, much better diversity. What do the exhibits most drawn to? The tree, the fox den, and listening stations. For those of you who have been to our site, when you first walk in, there's a tree you can climb, and on the other side, a fox den to go down. So some of the things that we would do differently, childproof everything, because there's little supervision. Um, reposition the visitor's desk, because the way ours is designed, you want your volunteer to be able to see everybody at all times, and that's a tricky thing to do. We would move the big tree to the back, because so many people come to the tree, and they play there for 20 minutes and walk out the front door, and it's like, there's a whole other half of the exhibit hall you're not seeing. Secure the wildlife statues better. We've had the flying baby alligator come through the exhibit hall, and we're like, why did you get that? I picked it up out of the wetlands. Secure, secure. Um, Maintenance manual with training. They will give you a maintenance manual, but for whatever reason, both of our phases we've gone to, the maintenance manual sends up a week, shows up a week after installation, and then you're left to sort of flip through and ask questions, those kind of things. It'd be nice to have it there when they're there to walk you through. And, of course, simplify the message. So with that, that's all I've got. Thank you, guys. Do you have questions?